The Lord be with you. And thank you for joining me for my weekly vlog. Well, please grab a cup of tea or coffee, settle in, and we're going to talk about the biggest event in recent history in the Anglican Communion, which happened this week. It's been going on all week. It's the GathCon 4 conference in Kigali, Rwanda. Now, a little recap for folks who aren't quite sure, or maybe those who want a reminder, GAFCON stands for the Global Anglican Futures Conference. And that is a network of wonderfully faithful Anglican leaders from around the world, people who are true to God's word. And they originally formed around about 2008 and had their first conference in Jerusalem, where they released a declaration saying that we believe in biblical marriage and the truth of God's word in response to doctrinal errors in Western provinces that had been going on and hadn't been disciplined by the Archbishop of Canterbury. And so they are a strong grouping of people who are dedicated to God's word. And it's grown to include so many people around the Anglican world now that actually over 80% of the Anglican communion can claim that they are part of GAFCON. And that expands outside of the Canterbury aligned communion to include continuing Anglicans who have split off from the established churches because of their apostasy in the past few decades. So it's a really broad spectrum of Anglicans, but what unites them together is their faith in the inerrant and infallible word of God. Um, this grouping at in Rwanda included 1,300 delegates from 53 nations, and they are archbishops, bishops, clergy, laity, Oh, just so many people who want to see the Anglican Church reach the world for Christ and remain true to its biblical roots. And they were gathering with, uh, it was all live streamed, I'll put the link in the description for you, but it was just amazing to see them gathering with so much worship, soaking the conference. So many beautiful prayers in so many different languages, all these cultures coming together, but as one under Christ. It was absolutely brilliant. Even watching here from, from the UK, on the, on the stream, I could feel the presence of the Holy Spirit among them because God anoints those who are loyal to him, who are faithful to him. And so they clearly had his anointing. And the chairman of GAFCON, a very bold and godly man called Archbishop Foley Beach, who is actually Archbishop of one of the continuing churches, the Anglican Church in North America, which left the Episcopal Church because of its backsliding and false doctrines. He delivered the most rousing, the most inspiring, inspiring speech as the opening speech for the conference. It set the tone for the whole event and everything that was to come. And I thank God for this man. He is the leader the Anglican world needs. He is humble. He is gracious. He is biblically uh, faithful. And you know what? He is bold as a lion. It's like Proverbs 28 verse 1. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Archbishop Beach was roaring from that, that lectern in the mighty authority of the Bible, the authority of Jesus Christ. And he went for the jugular. He just straight out said, we call upon the mother church, the C of E, to repent. We call upon the Archbishop of Canterbury to repent of false doctrine. And if they don't, there will be consequences. I've got a couple of direct quotes from his opening speech that you might be interested in hearing. He said, we, called, we are called to be a repenting church. In recent days, we've seen the Church of England, led by the Archbishop of Canterbury and their bishops, walk away from the plain teaching of Scripture. We call upon them to repent, to return to the teaching of the Word of God. We call upon them to stop blessing sin and return to the sanctity and holiness of marriage. Sadly, and with broken hearts, we must say that until the Archbishop of Canterbury repents, we can no longer recognize him as the first among equals and spiritual leader of the Anglican Communion. And response to that was incredible thunderous applause. It was amazing to see the support that he was receiving from the majority of the world's Anglicans. Um, then the vice chair, Archbishop Ben Kawashi said that GAFCON has been called together with a sense of urgency because of a false gospel that has so paralyzed the Anglican community, that communion, sorry, that crisis must be, this crisis must be addressed. The chief threat of this dispute involves Com compromising of integrity of churches, worldwide mission. So he was clear, the mission of the church is hamstrung by having this heresy. This is the global Anglican family coming together and saying, we've got a clear house, we've got a clean house, we've got to sweep the deck, we've got to cut out the gangrene before it spreads, and we've got to get back on track to saving souls. We've got to get back on track to pure, unadulterated, spirit-filled worship. 
And if our brothers and sisters in Western provinces like the C of E, New Zealand, Canada, America, uh, parts of Australia will not repent in these Canterbury aligned churches, then I'm afraid to say we're going to have to leave you behind. And the bravery is inspiring. You know, when the C of E voted for um, blessing sin at the General Synod and backslid, my heart broke. I felt such grief and so many other people did, clergy and laity alike, um, not just here in England, but around the world. But this sort of bold gospel stance encourages us and inspires us. And the whole conference was like that. I mean, behind the scenes, the delegates were all off doing Bible studies in Colossians and, and reading God's word together and praying together and allowing the spirit to speak to them through the inerrant, infallible word of God. And there were so many gifted speakers, more than I could mention in this video, but they were all wonderful. And if you take the time to watch their panel discussions or their presentations, you will be edified. You will grow in faith, even if you're not an Anglican. It's such good, solid biblical stuff. I was particularly encouraged, I've got to say, by the moves that GAFCON is making in the United Kingdom here where I serve, both within and without the C of E. So we heard from, Archbishop, from Bishop Andy Lyons of the Anglican Network in Europe, who said uh, that there is great moves in church planting in the two convocations that he is in charge of. They're consecrating new bishops, which I've covered on this channel. Uh, and there was even discussion from Ireland and Scotland about what God is doing there through the independent Gafcon churches who have left the established Canterbury churches because of their apostasy. Uh, and then there was also a very inspiring speech about the work of the Free Church of England by uh, Calvin Robinson of GB News fame who said that we must seek to shape our lives around the scriptures rather than the scriptures around our lives, which was very poignant. And he spoke about how the FCE, the Free Church of England, is very small and humble, but growing rapidly and is planting new congregations to meet the need of biblical Anglicanism. So you've got two branches of GAFCON independent to the Church of England beginning to really flourish and grow, which is God's grace upon them. But also really encouraging for people like me who are contending for the faith in the C of E, who I've stood up, who are um, being bold. And there are many brothers with the integrity to do this, and I applaud them, and they have put a target on their backs, uh, that, that GAFCON has said, we see you contending for the faith in the Church of England. We hear your struggles, and we are standing with you in prayer and practical support. I was really disgusted. Only one Church of England bishop turned up at GAFCON. So it just tells you exactly where the Spirit's moving, doesn't it? The conference delegates uh, formed a committee and the committee was to produce the statement at the end of the conference, which sort of sets the goals for GAFCON in the future, but also says what the conference wants to say to the world. And I was so impressed with this, dear, my dear ones. I tell you what, they didn't come up with a draft before the conference and then present it and then, you know, have a few options or something like that and do a, a round table. No, what they did was they, they put out surveys to get the mind of the people who were there. Then they came together throughout the conference uh, in these groupings to pray and to formulate what this statement would be. And so that it was good according to the Holy Spirit and according to the people of God. And I think that was so holy and righteous of them. Um, it was also really encouraging to hear that as this statement was being developed, it was clear that the Global South Fellowship of Anglican Churches, the GSFA, which are entirely within the Anglican Communion, are in partnership and lockstep with GAFCON, which includes the continuing Anglicans as well. So that's really good because some revisionists um, had been telling misinformation and fake news last year saying that there was division between GAFCON and the GSFA, but that's not true. These two orthodox groupings of Anglicans, which represent the absolute vast majority of Anglicans around the world, are in total unity in their mission to reach the world for Christ and to reset the Anglican communion. Now, the statement released today, actually, was really wonderful, so encouraging. I, I'm going to put the link in the description for you to read it in full. I'm not going to go blow for blow through it, but the, the discussion or the decision of GAFCON to push forward with more discipleship, with more mission, with more evangelism, with reaching young people and including them into the life of the church more actively is just so perfect. And it's, it's, it's setting up the Anglican communion to be reformed, to be purged of error, and to be ready for the challenges that the rest of the 21st century will, will throw at us. And praise God for that, because we live in dark and trying times, 
and the light of the gospel has been hampered by the horrendous revisionist false gospel that has infested some portions of the, the Anglican world. And what they've really said in this statement was, um, the real dramatic part was basically, uh, well, we're going to have to walk away from provinces that have done that. We're going to have to, if, look, the, the instruments of communion, the Archbishop of Canterbury for decades have failed to discipline these things. We're going to discipline them as GAFCON. And really, really dramatically, they said uh, exactly, they, they confirmed, they, they ratified what Archbishop Foley Beach had said in his opening speech, the Archbishop of Canterbury is now no longer the primate inter pares, the first among equals of the Anglican Communion, which is ma a massive move. This is a bigger moment in my eyes as the English Reformation. This is huge. This is one of the biggest movements of gospel integrity in the Anglican Church since the days of the English Reformation. This is so inspirational. It's so powerful. Please be praying for the, the Lord God to bless and to protect all the leaders of GAFCON from the attacks of the enemy. And that in doing this, God would bless the, Ang the global Anglican family to be put back on track completely. You could even go so far as to say, and some commentators have put it like this, that the C of E has effectively been ejected from the Anglican Communion, which, if you know anything about Anglican polity, is insane. It's the mother church. It's the foundational church with all the historicity. It was given all that privilege and position of power and influence, and it just threw it all away. Our leaders, our bishops, our archbishops threw it away for wanting to capitulate to the culture. It just goes to show that God is serious. If you do not remain obedient, he will punish you. And I hope like the Archbishop, um, like Archbishop Beach said and others said at GAFCON, that they do repent. My heartfelt prayer is for repentance. It's not too late to turn back. And that, I think, is the biblical and loving thing to do. But Gafcon has said, if you don't repent, this is where we're going to go. And this is, when, no more talk, this is what's going to happen. Many years ago, when I was in theological college, one of my dear friends used to say that Gafcon's like a, a gun to the head of the Anglican communion. And, and what he meant by that was, if any province or any diocese or any church, especially the mother church, goes astray, goes rogue, goes into heresy, then they'll pull the trigger and they'll just take charge of the communion themselves. Goodness knows what this is going to look like. They admit there's going to be complicated legal processes and, you know, um, and different sort of ecclesial processes in the in the mix in the different provinces. But effectively, I think they're just going to start to ignore the Canterbury aligned structures and build the Anglican Communion into a new, reformed, revived, reset family of churches that are dedicated first and foremost to God's word and the Anglican formularies rather than mere institutional unity in um, connection to Canterbury, which I think is going to result in massive gospel growth. I think the Lord is going to pour out blessing upon GAFCON because they have been bold enough to make a stand. And when I was praying about this and thinking about it, it reminded me of John 15 verse 2. Do you remember where Jesus says, every branch that doesn't bear fruit, the Father cuts off, but every one that does, he prunes so it makes more fruit? I think GAFCON's being pruned to make more fruit, and they're be used, being used as an instrument to cut off the unfruitful branches. And it's with heartache, it's with tragedy I say that, because I love the Church of England. I love it. Uh, it's liturgy, it's history. I love its theology. Uh, it's true traditional theology, not the stuff that's coming out the last few years. But by God's grace, if it goes astray, then that's the consequence. And that means that the Anglican faith will not die. It will flourish. It will continue to grow. It's already growing exponentially in the developing world. And I think it'll mean that independent Anglican churches, the continuing Anglicans in the West, uh, will now absolutely flourish. This is a sign of hope. This is a sign of incredible new beginnings. Now, goodness knows there are going to be so many struggles. There are going to be so many struggles, especially for those of us who fight on contending for the faith in Western provinces within the Canterbury Alliance structures. And please pray for people who are willing to do that. But uh, I think it will also mean alongside those that, un that unless they repent, they will see dwindling. You can see it already. Western provinces that have abandoned God are just in free fall decline. But those independent Anglicans under the auspices and under the authority of GAFCON will grow exponentially in coming years. This is something to behold. 
This is a moment to pause and to just say thank you, God, after the terrible tragedy and heartbreak of the General Synod decision in the Church of England in February, that GAFCON has gone ahead and made a stand. And just like the Global South said they would in their Ash Wednesday statement, we are totally, they are totally in agreement with each other, totally together in saying we have to reset now because the souls of the unsaved are at stake and the righteousness and the good name of Christ is on the line. And we will not stand by and let this happen a minute longer. So hallelujah for that. Please let me know what you think. Uh, comment below. Tell me what you think this means for the Church of England, for the Archbishop of Canterbury. How will he react? What do you think will happen? Um, how will they go about resetting the Anglican Communion? Uh, what do you think will happen in the weeks, months, years ahead? And if you have any prayer requests for your specific church, especially if you're an Anglican, please let us know. Uh, loads of people read the comments and pray for their brothers and sisters in Christ. And it's, it's wonderful that God's built this little community here. Uh, I'm really thankful for it. I'm thankful for each and every one of you. All I can say is God, thank God for GAFCON and God bless GAFCON. Well, may God bless you and keep you. May he watch over you and guide you. May he be with you as the risen Christ was with the disciples on the Emmaus Road. May he meet you in the breaking of the bread and in the study of his word. And may his spirit give you strength to draw closer to Christ as we walk together as brothers and sisters in Christ during this earthly life and this strange pilgrimage. May we know the risen one is always with us. In Jesus' name, amen.